Okay, so a super dumb thing happened that I have to explain to you guys before you get into the reactions. I'll try my best to boil it down as simple as possible. Basically, I thought we were starting with volume one, episode one. I don't know if it was a user error or a Netflix glitch of some kind, but we started with volume three, episode one, and I didn't realize we were in volume three until the end of watching episode three from volume three. When I realized we were in volume three, I thought Netflix jumped us from volume one, episode one to volume three, episode two. So I took us all the way back to volume one, but not episode one until like the end of the day of shooting these reactions the first day. The reason why I felt like it was really important to share this information was because in volume three, episode one, familiar characters come back, but we don't recognize them at all. There it is, the convoluted message I had to get across to you before you guys, enjoy. Welcome folks, I'm Jabby Kuwait, joined by Steph Sabra, and we're looking at Love, Death and Robots, season one. We're gonna do episodes one, two, and three, back to back to back. We're gonna try to do it in that kind of order for each viewing that we do. So you guys, thanks so much for joining us. If you're watching this on YouTube, you will see a cut down version of our reaction because we're only allowed to show you a limited amount of picture in picture. However, if you wanna watch the whole thing with us, uncut, uninterrupted, head over to our Patreon page, patreon.com slash Jabby Kuwait, or become a member of this channel in order to uh, watch the whole thing with us without cuts or interruptions, but you will need your own Netflix subscription so you can open up the show in an adjacent window to our reaction, and it's like you're watching it with two of your favorite pals from the internet. Now, if you're watching this on Patreon or memberships already, thanks so much for supporting us here. If you're watching this on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, bell icon, all notifications, and pretty please vote this up. Let YouTube know you're enjoying what you're watching. Here we go. Oh, jeez. You landed us in a minefield. Besides, look at these mines. They're ancient. They probably won't even go off anymore. <laughs> Jesus. I'm sure that was the last of them. Come on, we've got science to do! Yes, an in-depth survey of post-apocalyptic humanity could uncover important insights for our nascent machine culture on how to survive. I barely caught that. I, I lubed my guns with yeah. little tards. Is that what it said? All I saw was lubricate. <laughs> As opposed to like a physical mouth. Oh, that they have to, yeah. And according to my thorough historical research, Waikipedia, these guys were actually looking forward to the collapse of civilization. Many humans thought that with freedom from government sponsored medical attention, humans were snackish. <laughs> <laughs> They're not aiming out the windows because the deer were coming for revenge. You guys, you guys, you guys. Oh, whoa. It's not a blood pit, it's just a primitive booby trap. Well, maybe now, but these bodies did have blood in them at one point, and their skin was pierced by spikes, trickle, 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 times a bunch of bodies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they made it through a minefield, a bunch of barbed wire, cousins with guns, only to become survivalist cult kebabs. But at least they died free of governmental constraint. <laughs> so the whole of humanity tried to make it through the end of civilization with guns and spikes? No. Sounds about right. Just the poor ones. These humans had few economic or social advantages and fewer options. The wealthy and powerful, however, had a variety of sophisticated survival strategies. It's a cool ship. I'm getting Oblivion vibes a little bit. This is just an old oil reef. Yes, okay, technically true, but also it is a fully sovereign nation state on the high seas. Some wealthy humans attempted to create a new civilization in places like this. Well, so what do they expect to eat? Fish and sea greens. But by then seas had been overfished and the food chain was saturated with microplastics. What exactly is a tech millionaire? It's a lot like a regular millionaire, but with a hoodie and crippling social anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> These humans thought technology would save them, so they left behind any humans with the practical skills to run the place. Instead, they trusted everything to automated assistance. Could you haul in the fishing nets so I can eat? I could, but I won't. Catch your own fish, you disgusting meatbag. Oh my god. This is where the robot uprising began. The very cradle of our mighty civilization. It's... it's magnificent. They might have survived. <laughs> no. no, they didn't this have a chance. Awesome. They were mean to robots, and then robots killed them. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, that's dark. Humanity's leaders retreated to these fortresses to wait out the chaos deep beneath the earth, and then emerged to form a new world order. <laughs> They built an impregnable nuclear fortress, but didn't think to install a light switch? Hold on a sec, I got it. 
I'm surprised he doesn't have like infrared or something. Yeah. So their plan was to seal themselves in a mountain and have dinner parties? I told you, snackish. <laughs> and the survivors switched to something they called extreme democracy. Uh one man, one vote. The winner of this evening's election was the Secretary of Agriculture. Shut up! No, really? He was paired with a late Harvest 79 Merlot. Oh, the irony is delicious. Much like the Secretary of Agriculture. Ugh. Oh, man. And this trip is really starting to depress me. Did any of these humans anywhere survive all this? Hold the f*** up. <laughs> they went to Mars? Those were for the merely millionaires. The obscenely wealthy 0.01% of humans decided they needed an entirely new planet. But what about the other 99.9? Wow. Okay, but Mars? I mean, it's dead and lifeless. They could have taken the money they spent on the spaceships and used it to save the planet they were already on. What's the fun in that? I hate to say it, but humans are the actual worst. <laughs> but he had all the tools to heal their wounded planet and save themselves. But instead they chose greed and self-gratification over a healthy biosphere and the future of their children. As the great human philosopher Santayana once hey, said- Hey, shut up, that's boring! You guys- yeah. <laughs> What? Who are you expecting? Elon Musk. <laughs> nice. Oh my gosh. That was really good. I had no idea what the show was going to be about. What's frightening is how accurate a lot of that information is. That's the scary part. I was hearing stuff about like wealthy people creating, I, I think it was like a, a ship or something, or it, it might have been like kind of like that, like a tanker in the middle of the ocean, their own place where they live in, in uh, paradise and whatever, off the reservation. Uh, you know, no, ha no more having to deal with the taxes of the, uh, you know, government overlord and whatnot. They, you know, they're their own people. But I feel like at a certain point, you're probably going to run into something unless you've got robots like at that level. You're going to run into a point where you'd have no one to work for you. You got to bring someone to do the dirty work, to do like the the lower, not the dirty work, but you know, like the lower, um, the hard labor stuff. It's very fascinating all the, the things that they were talking about. And then like the thing that startled me the most was like the, the torch on the space pad when um, like you see all the people who were probably like scrambling to try to get on the ships that were leaving Earth. That's, it's so sad, but it's like, it's so real, you know? Yeah, it's all the apocalyptic movies I've seen, like Walking Dead, all the poor don't survive, but I haven't seen them get torched before. It was a really funny, messed up way to look at actual human behavior from every standpoint. Like a lot of the poor, uneducated think that they could survive off jerky. You know, it's a joke, but it's kind of serious. Yeah. And then the rich elite are like, yeah, let's just go to Mars, even though we had all the tools to fix this. Yeah. <laughs> well, it makes sense with tribalism and whatnot. It's very, it's very much baked into our system. I was like trying to recall it as the episode was wrapping up. I was, there was some person who like worked for the U.S. government in Jimmy Carter's era and he was like ascending the ranks and he thought, you know, surely I'll reach this point where I'll get to the smart person. You know, the, the person who's like in charge of everything and like, I'll reach that, that level where people stop looking stupid and, and, and stop looking like idiots. And what he found was, for the most part, everybody up there is just as regular as us <laughs> and, and like about as smart as everybody else. And that's the frightening part is because you have this sort of expectation of like dad and mom, right? When you go out into the world as a kid and come back home, like there's this thing in your brain that's just set up because of your childhood for whatever reason where they're obviously the smart ones and they obviously know everything. And so when you become an adult and go into the into the real world as a, as a you know employee or whatever in the working class, there's this part of you that goes, well, surely my boss knows more and surely his boss knows more and surely the government knows more. Surely someone in there knows more than we do. And like, surely someone's got it all to, and no, no one does. And that's why you can have situations like this where if you have someone who's wealthy enough, elite enough, they can create a system where they can, I mean, Elon Musk has already been building his own rockets. You think that's for us? Hell no, it's not for us. He's trying to get out of here. <laughs> no, so, no, no, he's planning an escape plan. <laughs> yeah, like, and, and a lot of them are. They're all planning an escape plan, but it's like you go to Mars for what exactly? The movie, the Netflix movie, Don't Look Up, it perfectly captures all of the things that I would want to say about this. It's just like, yeah, I mean, human the, the thing is we're selfish at, at, uh, at our core because we're tribal creatures. We have yet to get over that hump and i don't know what that is i don't know how we get past that but we are still very much tribal it's like i say hopefully the world fixes itself yeah. <laughs> it definitely won't i think there's like that thought 
like hopefully someone's on top of this. I know. You know, there's like everyone, I feel like most people collectively have that thought, like someone's got this under control, right? I don't mean to make this conversation long, but Joe Rogan had this great stand-up bit where he goes, how many of you guys, like, if I gave you an ax and left you in the woods, how long before you come out with a cell phone? You know, most people are stupid. Most people don't know how to make a cell phone. It's like, I don't I don't know how to make, do you know how to make a cell phone? I don't know how to make a cell phone. Now, obviously that's oversimplifying the tech that goes into it and like the generations of, of knowledge and whatnot. He's like, if the power goes out in my building, I don't know about you, but I sit and I wait until it comes back. I don't know anything about bringing it back on. And I felt that here where the power just completely went out on the block. And I'm like, I'm completely powerless, yeah. no pun intended. I don't know what to do. I'm not smart. I don't know. Like these guys had to come and drill into this, into the uh, concrete outside my building. And I'm like, I, I know nothing about this. You know? I know it makes you question self-reliance. It happened to me and we got a mini generator. Cause I was like, I can't be relying on people like this. Yeah. I don't even trust my family this. So, <laughs> so why would I trust the government yeah. with my with my heat? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean I have um I have uninterruptible power supplies all over the apartment. Oh, there you go. And so when things go out, I do have that, but that lasts like an hour. Yeah. So I need It's like, not survival. I need a proper a last of us generator makes so much noise that the zombies come looking for you but at least you've got heat and, yeah. and air yeah next <laughs> you know? episode we'll figure out our survival yeah, plan exactly <laughs> all right so now we're watching episode two I don't know why you're all standing yeah. around instead of bouncing. Walk the plank, bros. I believe this to be the only fair way. Fair way to what? Go on now. Just tell you on. Thank you, Mr. Meadows. Thank so well. Thanks so well. I mean, you should just give him the short straw. Yeah. Shit. There you go. So, now that we've chosen a leader, I will be picking who goes. He's turned the tables. I go willingly. I shall report what I see. Yeah. Do that. Good luck. That was a unexpected turn. Yeah. <laughs> I'd have grabbed onto the dude. I'm like, come on with me. <laughs> What what is the Yeah, what are those? Oh, oh man. Take me. Me. Take me. Of course. But first, you and I must come to an agreement. Good. Now there is one more thing you have, which I shall require. He said he needed meat? He said, I heard meat, yeah. Okay. I guess he's trying to take him to land. I negotiated with it! We find ourselves faced again with a grim and terrible decision. He's, he's gonna shoot him? Tables have turned. Each of you will have equal voice. A circle will indicate a vote to sail beyond the peopled shores, despite the risk. And an X is a vote for a shorter voyage to Faden Island. The duty falls to me to reveal I have succeeded in ferreting out the cowards in our midst. What did he say? He said they're a coward. 
Two cowards who voted to pass our terrible burden to the defenseless men, women, and children of Faden Island. Mr. Mellis, a step to your right, please. Excuse me? <gasps> Nearly as unpleasant as it was necessary. United we Damn. are at last in spirit, goal, and purpose. Oh. What if he was lying? Yeah, and just made that up. Yeah. Wow. They should put poison in one of the bodies and poison it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't even think about that. Double the time in between. One would hope. Wow, that was a savage shot. Yeah. Well, I guess we could just assume he was telling the truth. That, that's remarkably smart, though, to be able to keep track of like all the things you handed out. Yeah. Wait, sir. Please. They made me. All the meat is gone. Feed in life, feed in island. Yes. Patience is the word of the day. We are well on our way. Oh no. Yo, that's banana town. Really that's crazy. Really gross. There lies Faden Island. Closer by the minute. I am willing to see the failed attempt on my life as an expression of low morale. I swear it. And tomorrow, sir, if your friend below us. Maintain course. He's not in there. It's a decoy. <laughs> Who's gonna... How are you gonna do this all by yourself? I refuse to participate. And for that, I am grateful. Do it all at once. You have I know, what did you space it out? But I guess the bodies just go bad anyway. Oh, oh nasty! Oh. <laughs> oh my. In the spirit of fairness, I lied before. I didn't actually mock the ballots. I didn't have to. Every one of you made them oh. oh, wow. See, I told you. I told you there was something up. I was going to swim. We've arrived. Show yourself. The meat is greasy. And a hide is too tough for any garment. Oh, he's gonna set it on fire. Yeah. In abundance is oil. Shell protects. That's not for you. Wow. Keep, keep it, keep, dude, yeah, just keep going. I have no idea where he is. That thing moves. <laughs> oh, 
was pretty gruesome, but I enjoyed it. I'm not into gore, but like the story was so good in that little, in that short. Yeah, I'm not a fan of seeing innards and stuff like that and like faces being squished down, but like that was such, it was like the animation was really good and and the um, the characters, even in this little piece were like, they felt real. You can understand why they would do what they would do. You understand the motives of everybody, even though I don't know any of their names, like you just instantly get it. Like yeah. you instantly understand the stakes and what's it, what's involved, even though you have no idea who these people are. It's really interesting. And it's completely different from the first episode, but kind of similar in the sense that we're focusing on humans and mm. our stupid, selfish decisions at times yeah. to protect ourselves. But I really didn't like the baby crabs. <laughs> <laughs> That's what really is going to keep me up. That's at night. where I draw the line. That's a, everything else talking through a man's body, whatever. The baby crabs. How did you why does that why is that i don't know something about mass amounts of things and the idea that they could swarm on you do you have a fear of holes like a lot of holes no you know what that is right there's a camera like the movie no no there's a camera called uh, it was called light it was a, a very strange name for a camera but it had a lot of different lenses on it and some people just had a, like a weird fear of it because of their they have a fear of lots of holes oh i thought maybe you had that same no. fear. you just fear lots of things so like eggs like things that can make like hundreds of babies at once that really uh, free you just have you just birthed an army uh-huh but <laughs> true just yeah birthed your own personal army there's a yeah. lot of control in that and they looked like pink placentas i don't know <laughs> just as a gross like kind of polar expressy type animation but really worked for this because it was more horror and not a children's story yeah the only thing that kind of threw me in terms of this style was that a lot of their foreheads seemed rather unusually small and i, yeah. I, I like i wonder if that was a deliberate choice to make their foreheads small because i'm like you have to have room for the brain so unless the, the assumption is they have smaller brains for some reason that doesn't make any sense to me but it's called uh trypophobia refers to disgust or fear of pattern of holes oh there's fears for everything yeah that was a fascinating little examination of the human condition and, and human psychology and just like how we treat each other in a, in a perilous harrowing situation our main character who went down first was the smartest one. You know, they say in writing, like, I forget who, who the person who wrote the movie, uh, who wrote the book story, I think his name is Robert McKee. And I think that in both of those books, they say, you want your main character to be smart. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not that your main character is perfect, but your main character is smart, at least in a particular field. And this character was actually quite smart. Like, he knew when people were going to try to betray him because he understands human nature. It's fascinating. I really enjoyed that one. It was very nauseating at times, but I enjoyed the story so much. Yeah. And I'm like, well, it works for this particular story. To what you were saying about the animation style, I thought the animation style was very peculiar in a cool way. Yeah. Because it, it, ha it had a very, like, realistic look to it. Did you ever watch um, Animatrix? Yeah. Okay, so one of the episodes dealt with, like, a dojo. There was a love story between a black guy and an Asian woman. The animation looked so good that if you were just had it as a still frame, it looked like a real person. You wouldn't be um, faulted for being confused that it was whether it was real or cgi right at least at the time because it was years ago this was an it, this was writing that line where it's like i could still tell it was cg but it looked really really good like the texture and then the sort of film grain look that they applied to the whole thing especially when it was nighttime because that's i think in darker lighting scenarios you will end up seeing more grain in order to sustain that like the, re the receiving of that light it's hard to explain film concepts and ideas unless you already understand it. I just enjoyed that they took that approach of giving it a very filmic look. So it's kind of like an oil paint type yeah. vibe too. It was really cool, really well done. So this next one is called The Very Pulse of the Machine. We just drop a sensor package, grab a few pigs, and we're gone. Let me check the rear sensors. Might be a sulfur eruption brewing. That's not frightening. Oh, man. She didn't strap in. Why do vehicles always end up upside down? I know. Isn't the point of wheels to keep them on the floor? <laughs> Burden? No. Can you hear me? She's getting to know you. <laughs> Where are they? Mars. Oh, my. how did that happen? Uh, her helmet broke. Oh, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> they're in a different. Uh, so they're on a Jupiter moon, it looks like. This is Martha Kivelson. IO. IO expeditionary mission. 
Come in, orbital. Com sync lost. Next orbital sync window. Twelve hours. Shit. Twelve hours. Forty-one kilometers remaining. What? Oxygen levels low. Oh, System damage detected. Six minutes. Yeah, that's the, about the right response. Don't you want to move to Mars? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Let's not fix this planet. Let's go here. Oxygen level stable. <gasps> You're gonna have to drag that with you. Oh, oh man. to be astronauts I still want to be an astronaut I just don't want to live there <laughs> I don't want to I don't want to go to IO oh. ah. What is up with her arm Warning you may cause side effects well. Yeah IO is a Jupiter moon Better to die high Oh Morphine on an unknown planet. Whoa, is that what she got? Yeah. Oh, so, okay, Sounds gotcha. Sketch. Orbital? Come in orbital. How do you know it's real? <sighs> oh, you're definitely high as shit. Okay. Just making sure. <laughs> God. From pole to pole. Coleridge. Poetry, no! Oh, I thought I told you to shut up. Wait a second. So she was making zigzags. <laughs> <laughs> Wasting time. To the deep black ball. Can't you see I'm busy not dying here? Yes, I'm trying to communicate. <gasps> oh, no. I walked, and what I saw or heard or felt came not but from myself. Wall Stevens. It's choice. It's a yellow submarine up yeah. on this bitch. Oh, God. I don't know if morphine was the move, baby girl. Or maybe it was. I mean, if it makes you feel calm, how does she know she's even moving? I'm not. I'm not gonna make it. Warning, <laughs> mixing this drug with urine biochemistry may result in paranoia, psychosis, and hypomania. I has a cool mind. Oh, she's taking like Adderall, essentially. Well, Adderall would, would uh, relax you, wouldn't it? Was it amphetamine? What does this sound like? I don't have time for this. Io's metallic core generates a magnetic field. And yes, machine. I am machine. The very pulse of the machine. Burton's brain semi-intact. Language is data. Radio is medium. Sulfur is triboelectric. Oh, that's trippy. Really trippy. Are you there? Yes. Did Burton go? Yes. One minute until critical CO2 levels reached. What is your function? To know you. Maybe I'm gonna live forever. Or maybe this is just one last dream before dying. Whoa. This is so trippy. That's trippy. Oh. <laughs> That's nuts. That was one of my favorite looking animated episodes because it was so different, but also retro. Like mm -hmm. it had that pop style look that yeah. you see when you look at 
artwork of old comic book references, but it was updated. And then just the visuals, I was like, I'm not on drugs, but it feels like it. <laughs> yeah, I haven't ever done anything that is a hallucinogenic of any kind. I wish I had, but I have not yet. That, I guess, is the sensation you would probably have. And the thing is, right up to the very end, you're questioning what is reality. Yeah. Total Recall is another thing. When you're watching it, you're not sure if what you're watching is real. Movies like that trip me up because I'm like, oh, but it feels like this could make sense. And in that moment, I would be thinking what she's thinking, like, this might be just a dream or this could be like living eternally. And so she merged with Io, which is a moon, but also a machine, which begs so many questions like, wait, who made that then? Like, did it come from Jupiter? Did someone, in, is there is there like sentient life in Jupiter that made that for some reason? Like a satellite of some kind that it was designed to be intelligent and communicate and absorb? Like, okay, so if your mission as a machine, if you're, if you're, if the point of your existence is to know you. To know you. I'm guessing the point is assimilation, like the Borg from Star Trek. Like the whole point is to just assimilate more and more life which is scary. It's like, it made it look all beautiful and serene at the end, but I'm like, no, that's that's frightening. If the mission is to absorb everything, absorb all intelligence. Yeah, no, it is scary. Cause it's, are you a friend or foe? And now you're just absorbing me like yeah. a twin in the womb. But yeah. I, but I, <laughs> <laughs> the whole thing was really well done because you're just straddling this idea of whether what's real and what's not. Even when she's taking the drug, she's like, well, at least I'll be high if I die. Like yeah. She's accepting this fate where she would rather do it where it's visually more beautiful. And I kind of respect that. Yeah, like a twin in the womb. <laughs> How did you know about that? My big fat Greek wedding. Oh, okay, gotcha. No, because I had a I had an ex-girlfriend whose ex-boyfriend had something like that. And I used to joke that she dated a guy who ate his twin while he was <laughs> in the womb. She's like, he didn't eat him. He absorbed him. I'm like, what's the difference? What is the difference? <laughs> so, took his nutrients. Yeah, he was IO. My yeah. job is to know you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's frightening. That's my mission. And so she was indeed hearing uh, her, her uh, colleague's voice. It wasn't just like a drug trip. It was like she was literally communicating with the planet. Yeah. That's an insane thought because we often look at, you know, in a very woo-woo kind of sense, you know, earth is life also, you know, trees are life. They have a soul and all that stuff because it doesn't have the means with which to communicate with us. We don't look at trees as life necessarily, even though it is a life and earth is a life. Um, and we're, totally. slowly, and we're slowly killing it. If you're talking about like comparing it with the ship episode, it was similar where they're like, he can, the crab crustacean can talk. Yeah. Because we as humans don't know how to respect beings without language, which yeah. is bizarre because there's so many forms of communication. I thoroughly enjoyed that. And I thought it was, I, I agree with you, the animation style was cool. I'm feeling a bit silly because I know for goddamn sure I clicked on volume one <laughs> and it jumped me over to volume three. So it's just like when I read um, Why the Last Man. I, I bought all the issues at once. Oh, yeah. And at some point, I was reading one of the subsequent issues, and I was like, I have no idea what's going on. Like, I just jumped forward, like, a lot in this story. And then I realized I jumped an issue. These are thick novelization, uh, uh, graphic novels, and so I felt so frustrated. I'm like, I gotta go back and read all this again. But thankfully, with this being an, an anthology, it's like you can you can kind of jump around and yeah. you'll be all right. But yeah, I thought it was a neat idea. And, th and, and just like with the previous episode, I felt like I connected with that character right away. Even though I didn't know her, I don't know what she's about, other than she's an, ex an explorer of some kind on, on this moon. And I have a very, very basic understanding of who this person is and what she's about, and yet I connected with her because of her perilous journey. It's like survival is a very, it's an innate thing we all understand. Yeah, so. you want, and you wanted to root for her. You're yeah. like, I still thought there's still a chance that she survived another form. Yeah. Exactly. Episode two and three both dealt with survival. I don't know about episode one so much. It was more of an examination because there, was there really a story at the end of episode one? I can't remember what happened exactly. It's, it was just sort of celebrating people getting So it does, that is still survival, but it was survival of cats. Like the different, yeah, that was like the macro way of survival, what happened. And then yeah. the other two have been more micro stories of survival. Personal journeys. Yeah. yeah. So you guys, thanks so much for hanging out. Hopefully you enjoyed that. And uh, do subscribe if you haven't already. Bell icon, all notifications, and please vote this up. I'm Jabby Koi. This is Steph Sabra. Peace out.